Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I hope everyone had a nice weekend and now to ready to enjoy the word of God on today. Uh, I just want to thank every uh, my pastor and first lady this opportunity to, to give the message on today. Uh, I'm not going to be long. I just need a couple of amens and hallelujah. And that uh, uh, we can, uh, everyone can enjoy this message like I have, uh, reading about it and, uh, and writing about it. What I wrote about today, I took all the four Gospels, John, Luke, Paul, and Matthew, and, and made it into, squeezed into one, uh, two segments. And the, the title of my message is The Thrill of Victory and the Agony of Defeat. Sound like a little sports term there, right? The thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. You know, the thrill of victory when that you see that person, uh, yeah, uh, charged up, uh, happy, uh, 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 joyful, and the agony of defeat. Oh, uh, woe is me! But we're gonna see in uh, in these in, the, in these four gospels I put together that uh, there is a thrill of victory, and there's gonna be somebody who's upset because they lost. And uh, you probably know where I'm going with this, but today is uh, uh, Palm Sunday, uh, you know, and Friday was uh, Passover. So this is supposed to be a, a, a Jewish week, a Jewish occasion, a Jewish week. So before I start this message, I'm going to um, uh, pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, just want to thank and praise you Lord again uh, for this opportunity to give you glory. Now, Lord Jesus, I ask you, Lord, to touch my heart with your words, oh Lord. Uh, touch my mouth today and speak your words, oh Lord, uh, to your uh, to to your people, Lord, to your visitor, Lord, and to everyone that hears this message, oh Lord, on the on the sound of my breath. I just want to thank and praise and give you glory in Jesus' name. We pray with thanksgiving, my heart. Amen. So, welcome on today. So, we're going to talk about uh, the Victory March, and that is. Uh, coming into Palm Sunday, which is today. But before we talk about that, we want to talk about how Jesus himself had a week. Everybody, else, you know, sometimes we say, oh, that was a bad week. I had a, ooh, I had a good week and a bad week. Well, if you read this, these stories in the gospel, you was like, man, Jesus had a bad week until the last day. So let's talk about Jesus a uh, 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 week uh, uh, before he come to the... Um, before he come to uh for the feast of that day was this Passover. So, as you know, Jesus uh, heading before he come to uh in this uh, for uh for the feast of Passover that he was visiting some loved ones and friends. He was visiting Martha, uh, Mary, and also visiting Lazarus because he knew there was going to be a tough week for him. He knew ahead of time it was going to be a tough week, a challenging week, but also a promising week. So you know he. He goes over there and, you know, they they have conversation, they're having dinner. But, you know, as he ha and they're having dinner, there's a crowd outside. I mean, a crowd of people to come to see Jesus, you would think. There's a lot of Pharisees, Sadducees, chief, even the high priest came. They're watching Jesus. But you know what? They really wasn't coming to see Jesus. <laughs> have you ever seen that? Jesus is not a... Uh, 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 the life of the party, Jesus is not the reason they came. The reason they came is to see Lazarus. They came to see Lazarus of how a man that is dead for four days is back up eating, talking, having fun, and conversating with loved one. Man, they they come to see was well, this guy just a, a zombie, a walking, living, dead. But no, he was just like you and me on today. He was alive. He was living. And you would think people would get happy about that. I mean, hey, Jesus, one of Jesus' miracles, they was happy about that. But some people you just can't make happy. And unfortunately, it was the... Uh, religious leaders, the chief priests, all the religious leaders, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, because 
Jesus represents something they couldn't, they they didn't want to, they, they didn't want to see in him, the Messiah. But most importantly, they came and talk about not how to get rid of Jesus first. They was trying to find out how to get rid of Lazarus, kill him again. Are you kidding me? The most thing we look for and hope for is right there in our face, resurrection into Lazarus. But instead of jubilation, because it's Passover and uh, Palm Sunday is approaching, they had hate in their heart. They had hate in their heart. I can't remember any time in the Bible that said every festivity they had, uh, Passover, it was they had hate in their heart. But this moment in time, they did. Because they did not want to believe that Jesus was the son of the living God. But see, the reason behind they had to get rid of Lazarus, because Lazarus represented the resurrection. What Jesus said all along, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. So as long as Lazarus lived, the truth about Jesus is true. He is the Messiah. So before they had to get before they get rid of Jesus, they got to get rid of Lazarus. Lazarus represents the testimony of Jesus Christ, just like we do. We are represent of Jesus Christ. We represent him the way we speak, the way we talk, the way we walk. We're alive. We represent that. That's why the enemy don't like us. We represent Jesus Christ. He don't like that. He could. He would try to. He's trying to get rid of us any kind of way he can. The Bible says he come to kill, steal, and destroy. And remember that. He's trying to destroy our testimony of who is Jesus Christ is. is. Amen. Okay, so they get in there. They, they figure how they're going to do kill Jesus and Lazarus. But they decide, well, since it's the holiday weekend, as they say, we, we ain't going to do it now. We, we, we'll find a better way to get. We can't do it now. Too many people watching. Too many people watching. And you see how sin spread? See how sin spread? Uh, 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 for not just one killing, but another killing. The mindset to think about it, to destroy someone that you don't even know. Because you have a problem. A problem that you pray God for all the time that came true, but you don't want to receive it. Amen? Okay, so now they had that. They they, they had that. Uh, 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 Jesus had opportunity to visit uh, 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 relatives and loved ones there. So now, it come Palm Sunday. He come. He come. He come. He come. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. First, he come Passover. Passover was Friday. That mean when the blood. That mean when when the, the, the enemy when the enemy see the. Uh, uh, the blood on the post, he passed on by. That's the part. We supposed to be partying. We put we partying. But we're not. We're thinking about how to destroy someone on Passover. So this is the last Passover they're really gonna get. Because this time it's not a it's not a, a lamb, a blemished lamb. It's the Son of God. This is gonna be the, the uh, once and for all washing. This is the once and for all how we can return back to God through Jesus Christ. And Jesus knew that. Jesus knew that, that uh, he was the Lamb of God. And also, Jesus knew he had to die on the cross. He knew that. He knew it was coming up. But he didn't let it bother him. You know, he, but at one point, it got to a point that Jesus was like, man, he said, um, he was troubled a little bit in his soul. Could you imagine Jesus troubled in his soul? In his, you know, and what was Jesus troubled about in his soul about? Jesus was troubled in his soul that he will become sin. He will pay the price for sin. He will become sin for us. But also, what you know, what counsel came to them? He had to pay sin for us for some people who don't even care about him. Talked about him, spit on him, cussed him out, did everything about him. He was going through all that. So, yes, the Lord himself goes through things. But he remembered what the father told him. He remembered that the father told him that he had 
to be holy blood to cleanse all this away, to bring the people back to him. He knew that. Amen. So as we go through, as he went through Passover, you know, Jesus was really, uh, uh, you know, he was really joyful to go. But also, like I say, he had his moments, like we all do. I'm, I'm doing the right thing. You know, so remember Jesus at the dinner now, but when the main focus, it was Lazarus. So we have to understand how Jesus felt that all the things he about he done for us and everything else, that he couldn't understand why people would just for a moment in heart to look and see all the things he had done for us. All the things he had done for us. So during, during a, a part of dinner, Jesus told two of the disciples, and the, 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 the Bible didn't say who, but he told two disciples, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go to an innkeeper. They're going to be a, a, a coat, a donkey going to be right there. I want you to unloose that coat and bring them to me. And Jesus told them to disciples, you know, if they, if the innkeeper asks you why you need the coat, tell them the Lord said, tell them the Lord said, the Lord need the coat. Wow, that's all he needed. The Lord need the coat. So they go, they get the coat. And, um, and the innkeeper did come out. <laughs> he came out and said, what y'all doing with that coat? He said, the Lord need the coat, the donkey. And he said, okay. And they let him go. So now we get, Jesus get the coat. Uh, you know, they, they put a blanket on top of the coat. Now Jesus coming to Jerusalem on a coat, on a donkey. Wait a minute. I thought he's supposed to be a king. You mean to tell me Jesus is riding on a donkey with no arrangements on the donkey, no silver, no gold, I mean, no crown, nothing like that. He just walking through on a dirty, stinky donkey. That's what they saw. They did not see a king. They did not see a king coming through Jerusalem uh, on a donkey. They couldn't find him. They could not find him. That a king would do that, a so-called king would do that. So that's why they didn't believe. They think because Jesus came from Nazarene, that he wasn't worthy of it, or nothing good come out of Nazarene. They say they figured because Nazarene was not popular or a nice quote unquote town to them, nothing good come out of it. That's what they said. Just like you and me, whatever town you come from, if it's bad, oh, nothing good, nothing good coming out of Inglewood. They all bad. But God somehow always, always turned things around. So Jesus is coming as king of Israel on the donkey. Boy, they really bore them uh, uh, church leaders up. Man, oh man, oh man. It bore them Pharisees up, the high priest. You, we got it. Uh-uh, he can't, he, uh -uh, he cannot be our king on the donkey. Because the world's so used to seeing a king crown on his head, a prayer all around him, a long right robe. They use all the, the all the whatever, jewelry, diamond, rubies, all that. But see, they couldn't take the point about that seeing the earthly king, Jesus. But when we get to heaven, we're going to see, we, we're going to see the heavenly Jesus as he is, the king of kings. They saw an earthly king, you know, but when we get to heaven, we're going to see the real, how he look real good. And all his royal, all his royalty right there. That's what we're going to see. But they couldn't put two and two together. So they start hating on him. Okay, so he comes in. The people start putting their coats down, the one that followed him through the dinner. And people saw trees, a palm tree. So they took the palm tree and started putting them down. They put them down before him. You know, that's how they do uh, when, uh, when the king come in for victory, for his uh, parade, they, they, they pray, they put things down in front of him, you know, exalt him and everything and, and cheering him on and everything. 
So they was doing that. The people was doing that for Jesus. Wow. Well, he must be a king. They doing that for a king. But, you know, they never did that for the high priest or the Pharisees and Sarah. They never did that for them. But apparently they knew something that the Pharisee couldn't see. They saw a king. They didn't see a dirty donkey. They didn't see a man who wasn't dressed in apparel. They saw a man who raised the dead, healed the sick, opened the eyes to the blind, uh, 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 made the deaf hear. That's who they saw. They didn't, they, they, didn't, they didn't see nothing else. Who else could do that but a king? Ain't that something? But a king. Who can forgive sin but a king? Who can give righteous judge righteousness but a king? But they didn't see that. So the people started putting the, the palm trees down and the coats down and everything. And they kept saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Oh, man, they really got a problem with that. The people are hollering Hosanna. And everybody, you know, Hosanna means blessed is the king of Israel that come in the name of the Lord. Oh, they had a problem with that. He ain't no Lord. Look at him. Look how he's coming in. He ain't no Lord. So this is what Jesus, this is what the high priest came to Jesus. Hey, 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 tell him to be quiet. They shouldn't be saying that. Ain't just like the enemy talking to you like something like that. Don't want to praise Jesus. Shut your mouth, be quiet. Don't say that. Just like the enemy. But this is what Jesus said. He said, if you don't let them speak, these rocks around here, gonna cry out. What? He said, if you shut their mouth, the rocks gonna cry out. Ain't that something? When I read that, I said, I'm not gonna let no rocks cry out for me. I got my mouth. I got my health. I got my hands. I got my feet. I'm not going to let none cry out for me to praise the Lord if I can do it myself. So that's what the enemy always try to do. Shut our mouth. But don't let no rock speak for you. If the Lord has done something for you, shout it out. Don't hold it back. Tell someone. Because one thing, one thing that the rocks won't do for me, they won't speak for me. So don't let the rock speak for you. Okay, so after that, Jesus, you know, told him that. Then this is what the Pharisees uh, and the high priest would say and say, say, look at the people. Look at all the people clamor around him. They clamor around him. They got the whole world coming after him. Huh? Ain't that something? He, they, they said it. The whole world is going after him. And let's go back to the saying in one of the, in one of the scriptures in the gospel. Will Jesus say, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, all men, all men, ain't that something? All men, if I be lifted up. So there we go. It's supposed to be a nice time, but don't, but don't be a nice time for the Lord because they hate him and, and, and they, just, they just had a problem with him. Well, he didn't have to bother him. Because Jesus is going to have a nice time. Even though he knows the time for him is short. He's going to have a nice time. He's not going to let nothing bother him. Doing God's will. Just like we shouldn't. Let nothing bother us doing God's will. Oh, I know it's a pandemic. I know we got this and got that problem. But we need to still continue to praise the Lord. For what he has done. Because if we don't say nothing. Where's God's glory going to come? Jesus said, you are my witness. You are my witness for the things I have done for you, the things you have saw I have done. You are my witness. So we are the witness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't have our mouth stay shut. There would be no witness if our mouth stays shut. So the victory march coming through with the Palm Sunday, you know, and Jesus realized this was his last, you know, last week and everything. So he goes 
He goes to uh, uh, to, the, to to Jerusalem. He go into the money chamber. They call it the market. They call it the market these days. They call it the market. Jesus didn't like what they was doing. One thing I know about the Lord, if he don't like what we doing, he gonna let us know. He gonna let us know. As brother and Minister Dan would say, he, he messed up our apple cart. He messed up those uh, high priest apple cart in the church. Remember, judgment first come through the church. So whatever we doing wrong, the Lord will cleanse it and he will tell us about it. He would tell us about it. Because I learned today in Bible class today, Mr. Dan would say, Jesus told Paul, don't hold your tongue. You tell him the truth. And that's what the Lord was doing. He was telling the truth. He said, you made this, you made my house a house of thieves. Thieves, that means all kinds of stuff going on in there. He said, this will be a house of prayer. We're not supposed to do what the world do out there and here. This is supposed to be a house of prayer and worship. So you know what he did? He knocked all that stuff down. And they realized then, we're going to have to get rid of him. We're going to have to get rid of him. Instead of joy and tribulation and, th and thanksgiving on their hearts, the mind church leaders, they got trickery. Murder in their heart. But one for the thing they have asked God about all the time, where's our Savior? And when he come, the way that they, they, they want him to come, they got a problem. When the Lord answered a prayer for you, are you worried about how it's come, when it come, how it come to you? You just be glad and joyful it came. Of course it may not come. As the song say, he may not come when you want him, but it's right on time. It may not come the exact way how you planned it, but remember, it's the Lord's plan. You ask him for the, uh, for the answer to your prayer. Amen? So as we go here and take a on Jesus is in the uh, going toward the garden of Gethsemane. But before that, he was telling in Mark, in Mark um, 14, 26, he said, um, he said, because of me, you're going to be offended this night. He said, they will strike the, sh they will strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. In other words, Jesus said, they're going to come at me and they're going to, they, they, they're going to hurt me. But when you see me get hurt, you guys are going to run. You guys going to leave. Is that what we do? When we when we see someone that has been taken away from us in our sight, that we stop doing uh, what we what we uh, what we was uh, uh, chose to do. When we see Jesus getting pulled away, do we stop praising God? Do we stop uh, doing missions for the Lord because? They took him away. Do we stop that? The Lord is letting us know beforehand. Just keep on going. Yeah, they took me away, but I'm coming back, he told them. So he's the days in the garden. He told them that. Then he said, Peter said, no, Lord, uh -uh, I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to deny you. You know, I'm not going to deny you at all. He said, Peter, you're going to do it three times. You're going to do it three times. And you know, during that time in the garden, that the Lord was really, you know, was getting trouble, getting closer, getting closer. You know, and Jesus understood that his assignment was the cross. But he also had a situation that we all we all we all come to at times. Jesus didn't want to be separated from the Father. He ne they've never been separated at all. Imagine never been separated from your father or your mother. Now is the time, you know, had to be separated. Because 
The Bible tells us that since the beginning, before time was, they've never been separated. They've never been separated before. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit never been separated. But for this one moment time, they will. So Jesus was asking the Father, is there any other way we can, you know, is there any way we can do this? Is there any other way we can do this? You know, Jesus did not want to be separated from the Father. Same way with us, with our loved ones. So when Jesus prayed, when Jesus finished talking with the Father, he said, not my will, but your will. So Jesus realized, hey, I'm going to do what, hey, if that's what I got to do, that's what I got to do. I'm going to do your will. I'm not going to do mine. See, sometimes we may want to do it our way, you know, and uh, because, you know, hey, we may try to find a good way around it. But a lot of things that God don't want us to go around, go, go around it. We got to go through it. So Jesus had to go through it. Yeah, he heard it. Oh, yeah, he heard it. You know, so that's why today I, you know, I want people to understand about Palm Sunday and also Good Friday. Oh, it's a good Friday. All right. Because it's good that the Lord didn't turn around. He could have turned around. I mean, all the things we done to him, said to him, and did to him, he could have turned around. But he didn't. The Lord didn't turn around from all the things we said and done to him. It's very easy for him to turn around. But he loved the father so much. And he loved us so much. He knew that this moment will bring us right back to the father. Not just the, the, uh, the lost children, the lost uh, children of Israel, but everybody who was born into this world have an opportunity to get right, get back with God, what they had before. So he he gets, he gets in the garden. They come and get him. You know, it's a good Friday. How can it be good? This man finna get a whip for us, beat down for us, slap, spit on for us. But why we call it good Friday? It's a good Friday because he didn't turn around. But the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And his son is Jesus Christ. And Jesus knew that, that the Father said that about him. He knew the words, the scriptures are about him. So what did he say? He's not going to let it down. He's going to go forward for it because he loved us. Because Jesus knew if he died for sin, woo, if he just died for sin, man, a lot of people will be drawn to him as the word of God said. But, you know, the enemy and the, you know, the Pharisees and the high priest, they thought, boy, they got him now. Oh, yeah. They thought we got him now. We, gonna, we got him now. We're going to put this man on the cross. But before they got him on the cross, you know, they had to go through something else. Somebody lied on him. Oh, yeah, he said this, he said that. They had to go all, they do all kind of treachery to him. They beat him and everything else. But Jesus took it. You know, he took it. He took it when the uh uh when the when the guards slapped him in the face and they mocked him right there. Who hits you? They said. You know, ain't that something? He took all that for us. He took all that for us. That's why I'm gonna ask to uh, ask today, you know. That everyone today, just remember just what not just today is, through the whole week, when you thought you having a bad week, read a part in the gospel of Jesus last week here. Just read his last week, up to his last week, of all the things he was going through, all the things he was thinking about, all the things he could have done, he didn't do, because he loved us. He continued. He continued marching forward, even though 
He was been hit all over the sides of his life. He did it because out of love. We have to remember that. When you get opportunity today, between today, all through the week, I would like everyone to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for not turning around. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus. The reason I want to say thank you, Jesus, even today, because the Bible said the Lord is omnipresent. That means he's in the past, the present, and the future. I want us to say thank you, Jesus, so he can hear us in the past. Because in our past, Jesus is still on the cross. In our present, he's on the throne. In our future, our words will still continue. He will hear. So let's say that during this week of time, you get opportunity. Thank you, Jesus, that you didn't turn around, that you love me enough to die for my sin. That's what this week should be about. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Because if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have this opportunity to have a right relationship with God. Only through him, only through Jesus Christ, we can have a right relationship with God. Only through him. Made it possible through his death. Oops. When Sunday comes, we're going to talk about his resurrection. So remember this. The thrill of victory. The thrill of victory. Is Jesus Christ moving forward? The agony of defeat belongs to the enemy. Because now, what he thought what he was doing was good, uh-uh. Jesus' death brought victory to us and death to the enemy. He don't like that. He don't like that. He's defeated. The Bible said we win. We win. He's defeated. It's our thrill of victory. Because of Jesus Christ. It's the enemy agony of defeat because he's upset, he's crying, he's mad. That's why you're trying to stop our testimony. But victory is ours on today. Victory is ours on today. And just for that moment, I would like for you one time to get a chance to stomp your foot on the ground and say, There you go, devil. I've been always wanting to be giving you that. It's okay. It's victory. We can be joyful in our victory. So before, as I close, I want to thank everyone for uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, listening to me on today, and and and, and uh, hope this message helped them. Um, that it helped me a lot because you know, once you know you got the victory, it's our victory party. We supposed to be happy in everything. Hey everything yeah there'll be a moment you may feel down a little bit but don't stay there victory is ours the scripture just said it the victory is ours so as we ponder this week on what jesus christ has done for us i just want to say in front of everyone and every now i want to thank you jesus for dying on the cross for my sins giving me this opportunity to speak and witness for you so I just want to thank everyone on today as I close on my message that I hope everyone gives the opportunity to thank the Lord because just one week doesn't sums up everything but sums up a lot what the Lord has done for us. So spread the word. Don't let no rock cry for you. Say what the Lord has done for you. Tell strangers, tell loved ones what the Lord has done for you and what this day has meant to you. So also, I want to close with a prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. Praise the Lord again. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to give you glory. Oh, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for coming in as our king, triumphing the Lord, the victory over our enemies, oh, Lord. We just want to thank you and praise you, Lord, that we take your word, oh, Lord, and spread it around, oh, Lord. Hallelujah. It's our victory, thanks to you. So we just want to thank you and praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving the heart. Amen. Uh, 
as I close, if anyone wants to be a blessing unto this ministry, uh, it's on the website how we can be a blessing to the uh, uh, to the ministry. So again, I want to thank my wife in the background for helping me uh, doing this uh, live feed and everything. And also, again, I want to thank uh, God. I also thank the pastor and the first lady for getting this opportunity to speak. So I want everyone to have a nice weekend. Uh, good Friday. And I'll see you Resurrection Sunday. Amen.